Okay, so we were talking about interfacial angles. We say that crystalline solids, right? Crystalline solids are well, have well defined faces, right? If you look at the shapes of crystalline substances or crystalline solids, I'm sorry, it's it's like these, right? Or something like this, right? Where you can see that these two faces, these are the faces of crystals, right? And the angle between any two faces, right? Let's draw this. Problem. Angle between any two faces of crystal is known as interfacial angle, right? Since they have well-defined faces, so the angle between any two faces of crystal is your interfacial angle, right? Here, these are your interfacial angles right and one important thing is doesn't matter if the crystals right if we have different crystals of same substance right and these crystals are of different shapes right and different sizes right but the interfacial angles between any two faces of the crystals of different shapes and sizes of the but if they are of the same substance the interfacial angle will remain same, right? I repeat, the interfacial angle is the angle that is bound by two faces of the crystal, right? And this interfacial angle, the value of this interfacial angle will remain constant or same, right? Doesn't matter if the crystal is of different, if crystals are of different sizes or of different shapes, right? So these interfacial angle doesn't depend on the shape and size of the crystal right it just depends on the substance if the crystals are of same substance doesn't matter what its shape is size is the interfacial angle will remain same right so we say that crystalline substance since they have well defined faces they have interfacial angles now let's talk about amorphous substances we know that amorphous substance they do not have any regular shape right since they do not have any regular shape so they do not have these well defined faces right so here no regular shape no no regular shape so no well defined faces right no well defined faces so no interfacial angles if they do not have any well-defined faces like these crystalline substances so they, there is no point of uh, interfacial angles so no interfacial angles right so this this is also one point of difference between amorphous and crystalline solids right now there is one thing about amorphous solids that we should we need to go through that any material can be converted into amorphous or glassy form right by melting it and then cooling it rapidly right melt it melt the material and then cool it rapidly or you take that material in vapor form or and then freeze the vapor form right the material that you get on cooling on rapid cooling or or on freezing of vapors is your amorphous substance right so we say amorphous substance right can be obtained by rapid cooling of melt when we say melt we mean if we melt a material and then rapidly cool it or by freezing the vapors if you freeze the vapors it will change into amorphous forms so any substance can be changed into amorphous form by these two ways by cool by rapidly cooling the melt or by freezing of vapors now there is one important example of silica SiO2 right we know that crystals of silica are quartz Quartz, we call it as quartz. The crystals of silica are Q U A R T X, quartz, right? And 
this quartz consist of SiO4 tetrahedra right these SiO4 molecules are linked in tetrahedral form right in orderly arrangement so these SiO4 in quartz which is crystalline form is arranged in regular tetrahedra right this is arranged in regular tetrahedra right so this is crystalline form of silica right where SiO4 is or your SiO4 is regu is linked in a regular way right so we say that silica crystallizes as quartz in which SiO4 tetrahedra are linked in a regular manner these SiO4 right in crystalline quartz is linked in a regular tetrahedra in regular uh, is linked in a regular tetrahedral form right but as we talked about amorphous substance which can be made by rapidly cooling the melt so if you melt the quartz right if you take this quartz which is as of now is in crystalline form right and the constituent SiO4 is linked in a regular manner right in regular tetrahedra so if you take this quartz and melt it and then rapidly cool it on rapidly cooling this quartz what you will get is amorphous quartz right in which this SiO4 is not linked in a regular fashion right so since the SiO4 is not linked in regular fa fashion what we get is an amorphous SiO2 right we will not call it as crystalline S SiO2 because the SiO4 tetrahedra are randomly joined to each other when the molten form is rapidly cooled right so it gives a glass it gives glass the amorphous SiO2 that we get is your glass we call it glass right so we say that on melting and then rapidly cooling right it gives glass right in which SiO2 tetrahedra are randomly joined to each other so we say quartz is crystalline SiO2 where silica glass is amorphous SiO2 this is your quartz this is quartz is your crystalline SiO2 right where is silica glass silica glass which is obtained by cooling by first melting the quartz right and then rapidly cooling it what you get is silica glass this silica glass is amorphous right since we said that any material can be converted into amorphous form by cooling its melt so we melt it right SiO2 quartz and then cooled it what we get is silica glass and this is your amorphous substance and in this SiO4 is not, ring, not linked in a regular form right so SiO4 is linked in an irregular form that is why we call it an amorphous solid right so this is silica glass which is amorphous and this quartz silica right is your this quartz is your crystalline SiO2 and this is your amorphous SiO2 right I hope all this is clear to you and you can take down notes of, of, this is important the difference between crystalline and amorphous form right all these points are are important right now in the next video lecture we will talk about uh, crystal lattice and unit cell thanks